Hello and welcome to part 11 of my George Thomas dividing head build. In this part we are going to move on to the plunger work. This is going to include the three part plunger itself and the arm to hold it. This will be similar to the arrangement for the simple dividing attachment with a threaded hole at one end for the plunger assembly but instead of a pivot hole this one will need a slot to allow it to be moved radially to the correct hole pan. I'm going to start with the arm and so it is over to the mill. The edges of mild steel flat tend to be slightly rounded and as this is going to be a very visible piece I'm going to sacrifice a few thou of width just to take a pass off each edge. The sharpie is there purely so that I can see when I've removed enough material. Flipping the part and repeating finishes this completely unnecessary operation. At least while I'm at the mill I can usefully square up one end for reference. We are back at the bench for some layout. Again this is not necessary as I will be dialing in all of the hole locations using the DRO on the mill, but I have been known to misconvert fractions to decimal in my head and with the layout I can often see the mistake before the centre drill touches the work. A quick centre line followed by three hole locations completes the layout and we can move it back to the mill. I'm edge finding and moving to centre using the half feature on the DRO and picking up the first hole location by eye. I'm then zeroing the DRO and dialing in the end location of the slot and the centre of what will become the threaded hole. These are then drilled to 19 ths and all reamed to 5 16 to provide reference holes for locating on the rotary table and also later on on the lathe. With that done I can move on to the slot itself. I'm cutting this using a 9 30 second slot drill and removing the majority of the material using plunge cuts. I find cutting at full width flexes the cutter or machine enough to move the slot off centre. So for me and with my equipment it is worth taking the time to open out to size. With most of the material removed I am then stepping equally in both directions taking the slot to dimension. Each pass I am taking care to hit my numbers on the DRO which ensures I preserve the reamed reference spaces on both ends. While all of this is dialed in and zeroed on the DRO I am switching out to a countersink and using it to add a light chamfer to all the inside edges, and repeating this for the backside by eye. That is done and so it is on to the rotary table for end rounding. There is a sacrificial plate attached to my rotary table with no concentric reference on it, so to align this I am sweeping the spindle using an indicator and then zeroing the DRO. The part is then aligned on the rotary table using a 5 16 pin in the collet. I have a selection of these pins concentrically turned with one end to match my mill collets and the other at various common hole sizes. I have to say that of the quick and dirty setup aids I've made over the years, these have to be some of the most used. If I had thought ahead I would have roughed some of this material off using the sander, but as it's already bolted down now I will just plough on with the end mill. I'm just forming these radii by eye, but if I were to dial it in I would need to remember that when I reduce the width of the part I also reduce the end radius. Same process for the other end, bring the table to zero on the DRO, locate using the pin, and mill by eye. It is worth pointing out that this whole process has been totally overkill, and layout followed by a file or sander would have been perfectly fine. Regardless that completes the part for now, and I can move on to the components that will fit onto it. First is going to be the plunger body, and although it is only the concentricity of the internal features that are critical here, I'm going to turn this all in one setup just to be sure. The part is faced and brought to diameter before my usual practice of marking out the features with the odd leg calipers. I'm then turning close to the line, setting a carriage stop, and then fine tuning the length by advancing the tool using the top slide. With that set I can then proceed to reduce the shoulder to half inch for threading. The plans call for a reduced section at the end so I'm marking this out and again setting the length with the carriage stop before turning to the specified 7 16 With that to size I can create the runoff groove and set up for the half inch 32 thread. A quick clean up and a check for dimension and I can turn my attention to the diameter on the other side of the shoulder. I'm setting the length for the parting tool 10 thou or so oversized to allow cleanup, and the diameter is then taken to size, turning close to the layout line on the right hand side of the cut. With that done, I can switch to a form tool, and again I'm feeding this by hand to form the radius up to that line. A handful of chamfers, and I can move on to the internal work. 
The dimension on this is 5 sixteenths to fit the plunger, and as usual I'm starting with a centre drill, followed by increasing sizes of drill bit. Now the depth here is reasonably critical, as this part will eventually be face to length, and I don't want to break into this bore when doing so. With that in mind, I've marked each drill bit approximately one thirty second short of depth with a sharpie. With the drilling done, I can set up the boring bar for final sizing. I'm setting the carriage stop for depth by bringing the tool up to the end of the part, and then setting the stop by using a stack of gauge blocks between it and the carriage. There is of course absolutely no need for this kind of accuracy, but the box of blocks was already out on the bench, so it was easy to use them. The reason I've chosen to bore this rather than ream it is that I need a good fit on the supplied silver steel. I happen to know that my 5 16 reamer cuts about two thou oversize, so doing it this way will guarantee that fit. I don't have any small hole gauges, so as we progress I'm testing the bore with a drill bit that's measured to be 10 thou smaller than my silver steel. As I'm putting 5 thou of cut on each pass, as long as this test piece doesn't fit, I can take another 10 thou off diameter without worrying I'll overshoot my dimension. Once it does fit, I can judge the quality of that fit and begin to creep up to my final size. That is the main bore complete, and I am pleased with the fit I have on my silver steel stock. I can then move on to the through hole for the plunger stem. After checking that the bottom of the bore is flat, the centre is re-established with an extended centre drill, and a light touch with a finger allows me to detect any vibration that would indicate any wandering of the tip. With that done, I can drill past the end of the part, again checking for vibration with a finger, and finally ream to one eighth. A light countersink to break the edge completes the work, and I can part it off. This can now be put to one side awaiting milling, and I can make a start on the plunger itself. The stock supply for this is ground and polished silver steel, with the factory diameter forming one of the finished surfaces. With this in mind, I'm dialing the stock into the forejaw, ensuring that the section that is to remain untouched is as close to the jaws as possible. After marking off the dimensions for the stem, I will need to support this with a centre. As this is going to be reduced to one eighth of an inch, I'm drilling with my smallest centre drill, and then supporting the part using a half centre to give me access for the tool. With the carriage top set, I can begin to remove material, constantly checking the part both for taper and for heat. I can't run these inserts anywhere near hard enough for the heat to be carried off in the chips, and on a part this small, it warms up pretty quickly. The poor alignment of the tailstock won't be helping here either. One final pass and we should be to size. Testing the fit on the body reveals that the part is binding ever so slightly in the centre of the stem, so rather than bringing the tailstock back in, I'm going to fudge it and remove what's necessary using 600 grit wet or dry backed by some mild steel bar. I'm now happy with that, so I can move on to the register for the spring. I don't have space under the chuck for the carriage stop, so I'm simply turning to the line by eye. This diameter is not particularly critical, and once it's close, I'm switching out to a form tool to remove the last few thou and add the radius. A couple more chamfers, and this side should be done. A quick check of the spring fitting, and I've decided that I really don't like the way the spring seats on that radius. A brief investigation also shows that the radius doesn't exist on any of the drawings, so I'll simply delete it. I honestly have no idea what possessed me to add it in the first place, but it's gone now, and we need never speak of it again. This side is now complete, so it can be removed from the chuck. The pin side of the plunger is nominally dimensioned at 3 30 seconds, but to ensure a good fit in the plates, I'm taking the time to make a test piece using the same setup that will be used to drill them. With that done, I can move on to the pin itself. I have again dialed this into the forejaw, and I'm marking out the dimension with the odd leg calipers. This side does have a radius, so as usual I'm removing the bulk of the material using a carbide tool, and yet again switching out to a form tool to cut the radius and take to final dimension. I'm taking this down to a few thou oversize, and then switching to my test piece to take the final couple of passes. Well, it's taken a while, but I now have a good fit. The pin fits into the hole smoothly, and I can't feel any play by hand. Adding a slight break edge, and finally rounding over the tip using some wet and dry and steel backer, eventually finishes this part. So let's take these over to the bench to have a look.
the plunger fits into the body quite nicely. I can't feel any play and there is no binding. However, there is still quite a bit of work to do on this assembly before it's complete. I need to make the handle that will hold the plunger in place, mill some grooves into the body and some flats onto the screwed boss there to accept the arm. The arm itself needs boring and threading to take the body and there is a nut to be made to hold the whole thing together. Too much in fact to squeeze into this video. So we'll finish this off in a short video next time. Please do look out for that if you're interested. Again, do leave any thoughts in the comments. If you do want to see more like this, please do subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again. Cheerio.